It's entertained, soothed, and inspired for generations. It was even a symbol of resistance during the colonial era. The unmistakable <laughs> sound of the mbira, once forced underground, is witnessing a mainstream resurgence. Quite a few schools are starting to teach mbira. And for commercial reasons, you're getting more and more mbira being put onto CDs, on the internet. Uh, if you, you can go to a nightclub and listen to mbira. Chimedza and others like him are riding the wave, fabricating and selling the instruments all over the world. It's probably one of the last melodic instruments that people have so-called discovered. And so the interest is very wide. I mean, um, in America, for example, they've been playing mbira for probably 50 years. Um, there's mbira camps in Germany, in England, in France. Um, there's some mbira activity now in Argentina, in Chile, in Brazil. So it is growing. This one is very interesting mm -hmm. because it was, um, it's a derivative of a Thomas Bain's painting that was done, a uh, sketch mm -hmm. or drawing that was done, I think, in 1854 or 59. Embira consists of 22 to 28 iron keys mounted on a hardwood soundboard. It's sometimes decorated with a calabash resonator, which not only amplifies the sound, but is also an adaptable canvas for art. You know, this is by Vindau, for example. Uh -huh. that's, a, that's a Venda mbira. You can find these in Angola, in the Congo, in Zambia. Those out to exploit uh, its commercial success Bira. have only scratched the, the surface. I think that at this stage, really, we should have people who are not necessarily in mbira prayers seeing a stake for themselves in the mbira. For example, marketing people, computer people, uh, people who write books. We've also made interventions with the Ministry of Education. Uh, and suggested that maybe they look at Mbira as a vocational subject. Um, not really, okay, it's for Mbira, but uh, you can learn metalwork, you can learn carpentry, you know, you can learn to measure, you can learn about sound. So I think that uh, what the country needs now is to mainstream Mbira, industrialize Mbira, and commercialize Mbira. Some purists argue that due to the influence of technology, modern music is becoming a bit generic. Musicians here, though, through this proudly and loudly Zimbabwean instrument, are creating their own distinctive sound, a sound that is influencing and capturing the imagination of a growing number of global listeners. From Zimbabwe to the rest of the world, I'm Farai Mokutuya for CGTN at the Mbira Center in Harare, Zimbabwe.